In the recently conducted civil service examination 2023, there was a question on glottochronology in anthropology paper one. Do you know what it means? Well, here's a short video taking you through this method that had been used in linguistic anthropology and other sciences. Glottochronology is a method used primarily within historical linguistics to estimate the time at which languages diverged from their common ancestors. It is a method for dating linguistic divergence. The approach relies on statistical measurements comparing the shared and the unshared vocabulary between the related languages. The underlying idea in glottochronology is that the languages evolve at a relatively constant rate, much like the concept of molecular clock in biology. The frequently cited value of constant rate is 14% change in vocabulary every thousand years. Let's look at the methodology that linguists use in glottochronology. It normally involves four steps. The first, the selection of vocabulary. Linguists typically use what's called as the Swadesh list, a set of basic vocabulary that includes terms thought to be less subject to change or borrowing. And I shall be explaining more about this Swadesh list a little later in the video. Number two, identification of cognates. The words that share a common origin between two languages are identified as cognates. Number three, computing lexical similarity. The percentage of cognates shared between two languages is computed. And four, time estimation. Using a mathematical formula, the time at which the two languages are thought to have diverged is estimated. For example, linguists might compare the English word mother and the German word Mutter, which are cognates derived from the Proto-Germanic. By examining such words across multiple languages within a language family, researchers could attempt to construct a timeline for when those languages have diverged. Coming to the Swadesh list that I have mentioned earlier, it is a tool often used in the field of historical linguistics for various purposes, one of which is obviously glottochronology. This is named after American linguist Morris Swadesh, and it's a compilation of basic vocabulary words that are assumed to be less subject to borrowing and more resistant to change than the other words. The list contains words that represent basic universal concepts such as the body parts like eye and hand etc. Natural phenomena like star, water, earth, sky etc. Basic actions like run, eat, stop, stand etc. These words are considered essential for everyday communication and basic survival and therefore are less likely to be borrowed from other languages. In glottochronology, the Swadesh list serves as a basis for comparing the languages. Researchers identify the cognates or words with common origin in languages being compared using the words on this Swadesh list. However, the method of glottochronology has been subject to several major criticisms that challenge its validity as a scientific method for dating linguistic divergence. Let's look at some significant issues. Number one, the assumption of constant rate of change. The foundational assumption of glottochronology is that the languages change at a constant rate, often compared to what's known as a linguistic clock. This has been critiqued for being overly simplistic. Linguistic evolution is often not linear and can be influenced by numerous factors like social upheavals, technological advancement or contacts with other languages leading to cultural and linguistic diffusion. The second problem has been that there is a lexical selection bias in this method. Glottochronology usually relies on a Swadesh list. Critics argue that this list might not be universally applicable. The choice of words can skew or distort the results 
and ignore the nuances in linguistic evolution. In some Polynesian languages, for example, terms related to seafaring are far more stable than those found in the Swadesh lists, making the latter potentially less applicable in those contexts. Number three, external linguistic influences. The languages often borrow from each other, complicating the process of identifying genuine cognates. Such words, often referred to as the loan words, can distort the rate of lexical retention and thus the calculated time of divergence. For instance, modern Hindi has borrowed heavily from Persian and even English, which could potentially distort its glottochronological relationship with the other Indo-Aryan languages in our country. Number four, ethnocentric and Eurocentric bias. The method has also been critiqued for having a Western bias, both in its assumptions as well as its methodology. Critiques from the anthropological domains argue that the approach may not capture the complexities of languages and dialects outside the Indo-European family. Take for example, India, our very own country, has hundreds of languages and dialects that do not belong to this linguistic family at all, and most of them are indigenous in their origin. And the fifth problem with this method is the oversimplification of complex phenomena. Language is not just a product of time, but also of cultural, social, and historical factors. Glottochronology's mathematical approach has been criticized for ignoring the rich sociocultural contexts that accompany linguistic change. Sociolinguistic studies, like those conducted by William Lebao, emphasize the role of social variables, such as class and ethnic identity, in shaping language, aspects that are often neglected in glottochronological analysis. Number six, lack of empirical support. Despite its quantitative claims, glottochronology lacks empirical validation. Attempts have been made to calibrate the linguistic clock against the known historical events, but these efforts have often produced inconsistent results, further weakening this method's credibility. Even though some people use the terms glottochronology and lexicostatistics interchangeably, they are not strictly the same. Glottochronology and lexicostatistics are surely both quantitative methods used in the study of linguistic anthropology and historical linguistics to estimate the age and also in comparative linguistics to understand the relationship between languages. While they share similarities in terms of objectives, their underlying theories, methodologies and applications are quite different. Glottochronology is grounded in the idea that languages change at a constant rate over time something that we have already seen. Lexicostatistics, on the other hand, is less concerned with the rate of language change and focuses rather more on classifying and grouping the languages based on lexical similarity. It usually avoids translating these into absolute years of divergence. The aim in lexicostatistics is more to create a language taxonomy, a classification, based on shared vocabulary to group the languages into families and other subgroups. And before we close this video, it is pertinent to mention the contribution of Edward Sapir in this context. Edward Sapir is one of the founding figures of anthropological linguistics, who laid the significant groundwork that would later influence both glottochronology and lexicostatistics although he himself was not directly involved in their development. His work emphasized the deep connections between language, culture and thought, and he was amongst the first to systematically study the Native American languages. He developed the concept of linguistic drift, which is the notion that languages evolve in particular directions over time. Sapir's key contributions also included an emphasis on the importance of internal linguistic features for the classification of languages and linguistic drift, which includes sociocultural factors that include the inherent complexities 
and ambiguities in a language, social dynamics and other cumulative changes in the phonological, syntactical and lexical elements of a language. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Do like and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more.